In this video, we'll explore the different parts of wetlands and waterways frogs call from. Learning the different types of breeding habitat in wetlands and waterways will help you locate frogs when you arrive at a site. As we discussed in our previous video, Melbourne has 16 species of frogs. Different species will use different parts of the landscape and different microhabitats for breeding. So let's learn about the key types of microhabitat you should search for when you arrive at a site. This will increase your chances of encountering a diversity of frog species. Wetlands are a good place to start looking for frogs. They can have a variety of microhabitats you can carefully search for calling frogs. These include dense emergent vegetation such as sedges and reeds and wetland herbs around the shallow water edges. Some frogs may also call from the drier land areas above the wetland. A number of frog species can also be found calling from patches of floating aquatic vegetation further out in the water, so be sure to check these too. Creeks and rivers often have calm, still backwaters and swampy floodplain areas that fill with water in wetter months. Sometimes this may just be flooded grass, but that might be enough for a number of species to call from and breed in. Take note of any gullies and seasonally swampy drainage lines you might have on your site. Species such as the Victorian smooth froglet and Stodophrony toadlets may lay their eggs at these sites and wait for autumn rains to flood them. Thoroughly searching all the available types of habitat you may have at your site will ensure you maximise your chances of recording all frog species active at the time of year you visit. And finally, be aware that some frog species are highly adaptable. We've just discussed common natural habitats, but frogs are well known for making use of unusual human environments, such as watering cans, greenhouses, old discarded containers filled with water, and even people's spas and pools. Frogs will keep you guessing.